a brand new Diversified Semantic Layer podcast. This is Eric Vallow, and I'm joined by my, my friend and co-host, Josh Fletcher. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Josh. Well, I guess good uh, evening for you. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a brand new thing for us. This is uh, you're, you're witnessing the first in a series of uh, we're going to have vodcasts. And, uh, you know, honestly, at the time we're recording this, we don't even know the name yet. But we'll have it by the time you're watching. So uh, we're excited. Um, you know, Josh and I are Uber server nerds and um, inspired off a, a string of recent successes of, um, you know, both being on the ramp up for BI4 and the uh, the Diversified Semantic Layer podcast series on BI4. We're going to continue that thread and walk you through uh, kind of an interactive install of business objects on Linux. Yay. And what's even better? We're going to do it on free open source. How about that? So Very nice. I'm excited. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to find at the end of the install that it actually still worked. Um, well, we'll include notes in our show notes, but uh, you know, Josh has, has even given it a try. You know, I, a blog series from last year on installing um, XI31 on CentOS as well. Uh, so we've, we've carried that forward onto the 64-bit version of BI4 uh, for CentOS 5.6, 64-bit. We'll put that in the show notes. So, uh, you know, Josh, I think there's a few, there, there's definitely some legwork uh, to be done here, right? What, where do you think we start, I guess, before we get uh, this Linux box ready? Uh, well, let's assume we've got um, CentOS installed already. I think it's pretty um, straightforward to install, actually. So I've, you know, um, create a few VMs of it, and it's quite easy to just, you know, click next, next, next to, um, to get a, a box up and going. But um, once you're um, ready to then begin looking at installing business objects, I think the first thing is just um, just preparing for exactly, you know, what, uh, what you're going to install in terms of the business object components, um, what database platform you're going to be using. So that's, that's an interesting one to talk about. Um, in terms of the supporter platforms, um, We've got, you know, DB2, MySQL, which will um, install um, if you don't have a database um, platform already uh, to use. Um, you can also use Oracle, um, SAP, Snack, DB, or Sybase. So um, quite a few options there. Well, so that's an interesting point to bring up. You know, we're, we're, we're about to inst do this build, but it's actually a, a little bit different default database. Um, have, quite surprised by that you know we we we've done this install on windows before and it was a no brainer but noting that mysql was no longer the default install mm. for the windows build and uh much to my surprise it was no longer the build on the linux install either is this is this a sign of the times and the uh, ongoing feud with oracle i don't know but mm. mysql is no longer the default database platform for these installers Oh, that's interesting. So, so what is Eric? IBM DB2. It looks like a wow. stripped down light version here today. I think uh, so. So, as you start to to build your deployment, you know the the whole idea of installing BI4 on CentOS is you know this is a a great test bed for an environment where you might not necessarily have access to a Linux environment inside your shop yet or a large scale Unix box. Uh, and you're looking to, to kind of that experience, so um, don't fear it. You know, I think the the second thing that I saw is these these downloads are huge. I mean, BI4 is large, and I, and I started out with um, a 20 gig file system for uh, where I was going to install business objects, and a 20 gig file system for everything else. And by the time I had all of the installers downloaded. I, and and actually had that first base install laid down. I, I was running out of space, so um, don't don't rest on your loyals that your your old deployments of business objects are going to have enough disk. Um, you know, I would definitely definitely recommend having a larger than a twenty gig partition for where business objects is finally going to live, uh, especially if you're not going to. Um, have a distributed install. You're going to put all the tiers on one server. 
You're looking about um, three gig for the install files. Is that just under three gig? Yes, but then you've got you know the SP zero patch and the, S, the there's a fix a couple of fix packs on top of that as well. So mm. you could obviously move those in piece by piece. But I I was I had them all on this this VM at one time. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a, a topic for a whole other DS layer about whether you install fix packs or service packs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll leave that one. I guess it depends on the severity of your problem. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, uh, I, I guess um, one of the next points is making sure, uh, especially if it's for a development environment um, and you're not too worried about security, then disabling uh, SE Linux, which is the firewall that, that um, is deployed automatically with CentOS. So that can uh, stop, you know, um, you, you reaching port 8080, for instance, when you're trying to log on to the CMC or, or InfoView. Um, so the easiest way to make sure everything's running is to actually disable SE Linux up front before you do the install. And I think to further that point, um, SC Linux isn't necessarily going to totally kill the firewall on CentOS. Um, IP tables is actually your firewall. SC yeah, Linux is, a, is an additional security layer. For IP tables, you just want to make sure you poke holes in it on whatever port you're going to have Tomcat running on, which the default obviously is 8080. Um, or uh, if you change it to the standard HTTP port of 80, uh, make sure that's open on IP tables firewall. Um, and then port 6400. So if you're going to make this accessible from your client tools like Desky or Crystal, you you want to have that open on the firewall as well. Desky? <laughs> did I say Desky? You did say Desky. Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> Hello, 1999. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's also important to have um, port 6410 open if um, anything needs to talk to the CIA service as well, right? Does does anything actually communicate with a SIA directly? Isn't it all the CMS? Yeah, I, yeah I've had um, I've actually been recommended that you should open port sixty four hundred and sixty four ten. Interesting um, as a precaution, yeah, which is which is quite interesting. So because most most of the um, desktop applications talk directly with the sixty four hundred. So uh, you you mm-hmm. just schooled me on that one. Well, I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, I guess right. that's something to check if something isn't working properly. Indeed, if somebody's trying to talk to sixty four ten. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I think the last part then is, you know, from your, your operating system perspective, have a runtime user ready for business objects. You'll see in our video today that I, I run as, as BO admin. Um, I'll even create a Bob J group so that I can assign others to it if I want to uh, delegate access to where business objects lives easily. Um, and I can control that through the inherent p- permissions. Uh, on my Linux box, where I've uh, where I've set up business objects to live. Because mm-hmm. in XI three one, um, the business object installer actually prevented you from ru- running the installation as the um, root user. Is that still the case in BI four? Yeah, we're we're going to see the same here today. We're going to su over and use the bo admin runtime user. Mm. Yep, exactly. The the it's that last step that that post config step still exists where we need to run it as root. Okay, so the um, the next thing you need to have ready once you've um, got your runtime user created is to actually um, create the install path for where the um, business object installation is actually going to sit on the file system. And normally you create one folder um, and then put your install files in there as well as create a folder specifically for the um, the actual application to sit in. Uh, and then we need to grant our runtime user that we created, so BO admin and also the group um, uh, that, that uh, BO admin user has been added to grant them access to um, see and execute the installation files as well as the folder where the application will be sitting. You know, I'm an old creature I have it at this point. You know, I, I always habitually create a root app folder where business objects live. I, I, I don't know. I guess I could move it up a level and put it in the root file system, but I like the tidiness of putting everything I'm installing that's third-party related in my app folder. I know, I know guys put it in the opt folder. Um, I've seen people put it in... Um, in the user folder, but that's just how I roll, and that's what we'll see today. Yep, great. The next thing um, you need to do is actually verify your locale, and this is something that actually catches a lot of people out, including myself. <laughs> so um, this is one thing that actually um, Eric put on one of the uh, blog posts around installing um, Linux uh, on, for, uh, well, sorry, installing Business Audio XI three one on Linux. So I've I've got. 
my VM set and ready to go with all those prerequisites that we talked about, and hopefully you've uh, you've seen flash by on the screen. Um, and and what we should see here then is a nice tidy folder set. Uh, Bob J is where we're going to install business objects. The install folder is where uh, my content actually lives, and uh, I'm currently logged in as root. So first off, I'm going to SU over to the BO admin user. I want it to go as the runtime user in this case. Oops. And there's the contents of that unpacked tarball of the very first build of BI4. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com. Thank you.